Church family and friends, today is Wednesday, July 22nd, 2020, and it is day 36 of our 40 days of praying. We're five days, 36, 7, 8, 9, 44 days uh, away from completing our 40 days of prayer together as a church. We'll be uh, concluding this time of prayer on Sunday uh, as a church together, worshiping uh, in the morning at uh, 9 and 10.30 a.m., and then gathering again in the evening uh, at 5 p.m. And uh, we're going to spend some time together on uh, Sunday, July 26th, uh, in that evening service at 5 p.m., uh, a, a good portion of our time together just praying, continuing to pray. We've been praying for 40 days uh, individually in our homes encouraging ourselves through God's Word uh, each Sunday as we've gone through this. And I want for us to conclude this uh, time of praying by praying all together and asking for God to speak to us, speak through us, uh, continue to guide and direct us as a church, which is the way that we've been praying over the last uh, 40 days together. Uh, so I hope that you'll make time to join us for worship on Sunday, both in the morning uh, and in the evening, uh, as, we, uh, as we seek to glorify God, in worship and through hearing his word uh, preached and applied to our lives and then uh, again in prayer together as a church family. Um, you, you may be looking at Sunday, uh, July 26th, that 40th day of prayer as a finish line, as like a, a goal that you have reached, uh, made it through. And in some ways, you know, those of you that have been praying consistently for 40 days, uh, you should uh, in some sense be glad for that, be encouraged by uh, the fact that you took 40 days, uh, almost uh, six weeks, to, to just give yourself to concerted prayer to God. I'm, I'm really glad for it. Um, what I'm finding, though, is that much of the uh, reward, much of the fruit uh, of this 40 days of prayer, for me personally, has only come in like the last two weeks, the last week and a half or so of praying. Uh, in those times, God revealing to me and drawing me to certain parts of his word uh, where he has been really speaking to me personally, applying his word to my life and shaping even my ministry uh, by his word in the last couple of weeks. And so I'm seeing day 40 this coming Sunday, uh, not so much as a finish line for myself, but in many ways as a starting point. I feel like the last 40 days have just been spent getting myself uh, uh, set in the blocks, uh, ready for the race to actually start, for the task of prayer to really begin. And so I'm looking at day 40 as the, the starting line, uh, not, the, not the finish line. And, and I hope that you will too. I hope that your time in prayer uh, to God over these last several weeks has been fruitful in such a way that you are driven to uh, and inspired by God to want to pray more. We've been praying over these last um, uh, several weeks for God to reveal his will and direction for us as a church. And this is not, uh, you know, just selfish for me, you know, as a pastor, for us as a, ch as a church. It's like, like we have no visions. We got, you know, God's got to give it to us. We have a clear mission and vision uh, for making disciples here as a church, but we still want God's direction in all of that. Jesus instructs those that are listening to him in the Sermon on the Mount to pray for God's will and for his direction. Uh, look at Matthew chapter 6, uh, just the first part of the Lord's Prayer, verses 6 and 9. You can see that on the screen. Jesus says, pray then like this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. That means your name be regarded as holy. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How is God's kingdom, how is God's will done on, uh, in heaven? Well, it's done perfectly. Uh, there, there's no limit to his reign. There, there is no place where uh, in heaven where God does not reign entirely as king, where Christ does not reign as king. There's no place in heaven where God's will is not done. And in our prayer, we are to pray that those heavenly realities, that everything that is in the presence of God would be just that way and no less even on earth. We've been praying for 40 days for God to give us vision, direction, guidance as a church, insight into ministry in our community. We've been praying for God's kingdom and his will to be done in our lives, in our church, in our community. And, um, and, and I sense that God has begun to speak to me in these last couple of weeks and in really uh, encouraging, insightful, uh, and um, um, just helpful ways for me as an individual. I hope that's doing the same for you too. 
We're praying for God's will for his kingdom to be done in heaven as it is on earth, uh, that, that all things might be as he desires and no less. And that's who we want to be as Christians. We want to be fully sanctified, fully made, we want to be made holy in Christ's image and no less in this life. We want to minister to people in the love and the name of Jesus uh, effectively uh, without any fault or defect in what we're doing. Uh, are we ever going to do it perfectly? No, of course not. But we're always pressing to be more godly, more Christ Christ-like, more uh, gospel-centered in all that we are doing. And that all begins in prayer, orienting our heart, our will, our desires to God's, and then allowing him to use us uh, to accomplish his will and to bring his kingdom on earth. I hope that you will see day 40 this Sunday, July 26th, not as the finish line to our 40 days of prayer, but as the starting point, the starting line, the gun going off at the beginning of the race, a uh, race of continued prayer and faithfulness as a church. I want to read for us uh, uh, another prayer from the Puritans. comes uh, again from this little book called The Valley of Vision, a uh, prayer called The Divine Will. We're praying, Father in heaven, your kingdom come, your will be done. Pray with me today and then join us again on Sunday in worship uh, as we pray together as a church for God to continue speaking to us, leading us, guiding, and directing us. Hear this prayer. O Lord, I hang on thee. I see, believe, live when thy will, not mine, is done. I can plead nothing in myself in regard of any worthiness and grace, in regard of thy providence and promises, but only thy good pleasure. If thy mercy make me poor and vile, blessed be thou. Prayers arising from my needs are preparations for future mercies. Help me to honor thee by believing before I feel. For great is the sin if I make feeling a cause of faith. Show me what sins hide thee from me and eclipse thy love. Help me to humble myself for past evils, to be resolved to walk with more care. For if I do not walk holily before thee, how can I be assured of my salvation? It is the meek and the humble who are shown thy covenant, know thy will, are pardoned and healed, who by faith depend and rest upon thee, who are sanctified and quickened, who evidence thy love. Help me to pray in faith, and so find thy will, by leaning hard on thy free, rich mercy, by believing thou wilt give what thou hast promised. Strengthen me to pray with the conviction that whatever I receive is thy gift, so that I may pray until prayer be granted. Teach me to believe that all degrees of mercy arise from several degrees of prayer, that when faith is begun, it is imperfect and must grow, as chapped ground opens wider and wider until rain comes. So shall I wait thy will, pray for it to be done, and by thy grace become fully obedient. Yes, Lord, may your kingdom come, and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Do this in us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.